click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we are going to see the difference between active filters and passive filters. We have seen there are different types of filters are available depending on the kind of component use or kind of devices used to design a filter your filter can be categorized as an active filter and a passive filter now what exactly the difference between active and passive that we are going to see in this video so here are few points i have listed as a difference point of active and passive so first point Active filters use active components such as op-amp and transistor. We have discussed which are the active components. So op-amp operational amplifier where you provide the voltage supply and depending on the input supply your output will get produced. That means it is acting on the provided input and delivering the output. So it is an active device. Similarly transistor if you consider BJT. BJT you give the input supply or input current and according to the input supply your output current or output voltage get produced. So when you use transistor or op-amp such kind of device to design a filter that filter is known as an active filter. Whereas the use of passive components such as capacitor, inductor and resistor can be used. Register, capacitor and inductor these are the components if you use this components to design a filter for example RC RC is a type of filter depends on the filtering components used and RC stands for resistive capacitive network this resistive capacitive network can be used for the filtering operation similarly inductive capacitive network can also be used so if you are going for this type of components that particular device is known as a passive device or a passive filter so this is a major difference between active and passive second active filter provide high gain and passive filter provides low gain so gain is high in active so active filters are always preferred for operations third easy tuning and tuning is not easy so in active filter tuning is easy now what is tuning when you use a filter suppose the filter is designed for the frequency from 100 hertz to 200 hertz so now that frequency should be tuned into that filter for example when you play a radio station when you play a radio there are different stations available for example 97.5 or 92.5 for example so what is that 92.7 or 97.5 so these are the frequency range that means if your signal that audio signal or the song which is playing on the radio if that particular song is having the frequency equal to 92.5 hertz then only your radio will catch that particular frequency that means your radio gets tuned to that particular frequency and if that frequency signal is available that frequency can be catched by the radio and radio will be able to play that particular song this is what we do in a tuning so your filter should be tuned to that particular frequency so that that frequency signal will pass through the filter and other frequency signal will get blocked uh, similarly 92.5 signal is tuned for the radio then radio will only play a song which is running on that frequency it will not play a song which is running on the 107.5 frequency again if they play both the songs they will be distortion the song will get added and you won't be able to hear a one particular song correct so that will be considered as a noise or that will be considered as a distortion that is what the concept of tuning is so in an active filter the tuning of a frequency is easy whereas in a passive filter tuning is not easy fourth cheaper and contains less components since op-amp is, is in a form of a IC, transistors are a small components. They can be also available in the form of IC. So they are cheaper and contains a less components. But when inductors are used, inductor in passive, we go for an inductor and inductor is having a large size. So there is a large space required. So these are and also the inductors are costly. Fifth, the frequency response is a sharp. 
we have a frequency response that is ideal frequency response and practical frequency response for each filter likewise we have seen for opam we have a ideal characteristics and practical characteristics so the frequency response should be sharp that means if the particular frequency is given as a cutoff frequency your filter should stop at that particular frequency so that defines the sharp frequency response so in active filters we have a sharp response whereas in a passive filter the frequency response is not sharp six in active filter no loading problem due to input impedance high input impedance and low output impedance here the ideal characteristics gates match with active filters because you are using opam having a large input impedance and low output impedance so there is a no loading problem but in a passive filter there is a loading problem because there is no active component used. you go for the passive so when there is an inductor resistor and capacitor these are the components which consume very large amount of power so power consumption is more and they add a noise into the signal so the loading effect can be get produced into the passive filter so these are the few differences between active filters and passive filter so here onwards we are going to see the active filters because we are going to design a filters using opam and if the opam is used along with the resistive capacitive network then that particular filter is known as active filter thank you for watching this video stay tuned to ekeda do subscribe ekeda thank you so much